Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together in here and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand if you do not obey him, it is made manifest and made obvious that. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the most high. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, to the saints in the chat, to the saints scattered around the world that we don't even know about. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's uh do 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 do. I'm gonna give y'all a mic so I can take a day off. You know what I'm talking about? Let's uh no. No. Uh what we talked about last week. Yeah, everybody got their hand up. All the hands went down all of a sudden. Me, 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 me. You wasn't even here last week. I ain't gonna tell me what we talked about last week. That's not my question. But go ahead. Tell me what happened before. Tell me the last thing you remember. There was a woman with a glass slipper. Oh, that's, that's oh, the that's wrong that's book, boy. Last huh? Last week, what I remember. The sin that the girl did. It was a girl that did a sin. You would remember that. You male chauvinist pig. Yeah. So look, okay, so it's a it's a it's a woman that did a sin. What sin did she do? Okay, hold on. Okay, hold on. Okay, go ahead. Tell me it's a it's a woman. She had a sin. What was it? Okay, so she laid in somebody else's bed, the woman did. And then what happened as a result? Zahar. Okay, Zahar, Zahar, let me see. What happened as a result? Two people saw in the act. Oh, they caught her in the act. Okay. Let me see. They went to Yahushua. They brought the girl with them, caught her in the act, went to Yahushua, brought the girl. What else? Come on, we running the whole show here. Calm, everybody relax, everybody relax, everybody relax, everybody relax. What else? They only brought the girl. Yahushua said what? No, the two boys said, All right. I don't know where you get two boys from, but that's what that was your imagination. In your mind, it was only two people. But that the book, but the book didn't say, I know you got more. Let me see. Uh Max. Let me see what Max got. What else happened after that? That's right. So we talked about our law, right? We so we talked about our law. Our law so our law say what has to happen. You catch somebody in the act, what has to happen? You gotta bring both of books say both gotta die. So they brought one person to Yahushua. Yahushua did what after that? He started writing this. You know what, y'all? Right. I thought you wasn't even here. You was here. Then now I gotta apologize to you because I thought you wasn't here. You over here killing. Me. Hold on, what happened? They start walking away. That's right. The people start walking away. What else? And he also told the girl that. Uh, oh, he, that's right. So she is. Then eventually he asked her. He said, "Who?" Uh, that, no, that, no. What did he ask her? He asked her. She said, she said, Who are your accusers? You know what I'm saying? And then and then uh, everybody walked away. He said, "Who are who are your your accusers?" And then she responded. She is like, "None." You know what I'm saying? I don't see him. And after that, he says. Nor do I con condemn you. Go and then what he tell her to do? Sin no more. I got that right. Right, good job. That was good. That was, that was good. What else happened after that though? We had a whole lot of more book after that. What else happened after that? We had a whole chapter after that. That was chapter eight. Somebody tell me about chapter darn nine. Uh, right. Y'all should have spit right in the dirt. Bow. Slap that thing over his eyes like a mud pit. I would, that would, see, y'all think that's nasty. Y'all thinking like, they spit in the dirt. Y'all don't know when y'all go to them Japanese, not y'all, but the women, when y'all go to them Japanese places and they put the little mud over your face and all this stuff, that's what that is. They went back there and they, and they mixed it up and they brought it back out and they came to you 
And then what they be doing, they be talking to their friend. You know what I'm saying? And rub that thing in you. That thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so now, so that's racist. That's racist because now you're saying Japanese people can only do nails. That's racist. That's racist. They can do more than nails. They can massage and do nails. That's racist. That's all I'm saying. I feel like they can put. I feel like they can do whatever they put their mind to. I ain't gonna limit no Japanese woman or Korean. So look, Vietnamese. That's racist. I feel like I feel like anybody can do nails. <laughs> I don't think only the Viet Cong can do it. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> so look, <laughs> so listen, if <laughs> you got, so you got, you got Yao Shua, he helped the man, the man was blind, right? Yeah, yeah. He was yeah. blind. He, 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 so after that, the man could see, right? But remember, how did that conversation start? What was the first question that his disciples asked? Oh. He's walking by. Then what? He did say something. Somebody said something. Oh, yeah. What happened? Oh, what you got? Said, what you got? No, no, nah, nah, that's not what he said. Let me see. What he what he got? Oh, Come on, you had all that time to think, and then you didn't think. Oh, I <laughs> I know, but I want to know about before that. <laughs> the man told him what? <laughs> you gotta get to it. Come on. No, nah, that's not it. That's not it. So look, this is what happened. When when the disciples were walking by, they asked Yahushua a question. I'm gonna give you one chance. Go. Uh, they, I told him to... He did tell him that later. But listen, before that, Yahushua was walking by. He saw the blind the, the disciples saw the blind man and they asked Yahushua the question. They said, Is he like that because of his parents' sin or because of his own sin? They acknowledge that he was like that since birth. He was born that way. But was he born that way because of his own sin or because of his parents' sin? And Yahushua answered and said, neither. The reason why that man is blind is so that the glory of the Most High God can be shown. Right? So that's when Yahushua healed him and then the glory of the Most High God was shown. After that, Yahushua went on. The man is happy. He running around. They say, what is you running around for? He said, man, heal me and I could see. They said, who did this on the Sabbath? He said, look, man, that was that guy over there. He bumped into Yahushua again. He said, man, my name is Yahushua. And the people gaffed him up and they start questioning him. And then they called his parents. They said, listen, is this true? You know what I'm saying? These people talking about Yahushua, the Messiah. We feel like he lying. He didn't really heal your son. Tell me, was your son really born like that? And the parents are a little nervous, right? The parents are looking like, look, man, I know how these Pharisees can get about Yahushua now. I don't want to get on their bad side. So they looking like uh, he's of age. You can ask him yourself. Y'all ain't got to ask me. Ask him. So then they asked him. He is looking like, man, I don't know nothing about no Yahushua. All I know is I couldn't see. And because of him, now I can't. Right? So Yahushua started to, you know what I'm saying, take shots at the Pharisees a little bit. And at the end of the chapter, he kind of told the Pharisees, he told them, you know what I'm saying? The Pharisees was like, oh, you trying to say we blind? You know what I'm saying? And then he told him, he was like, nah, y'all not blind, because if y'all was blind, y'all be all right. Since y'all think y'all can see, your sin remain, right? So the lesson there for us is sometimes we got to shut our darn mouth, open our darn eyes, and pay attention to what the Most High God is saying, right? That's how that thing works, right? Sometimes some, some stuff be looking off and feeling off, but we got to remove our own personal opinions, our own personal feelings, and look at what the books say. If the book say it's right, then it's right. If the book say it's wrong, then it's wrong. It'd be some stuff. It'd be some stuff you might see in this book and it might feel wrong. The people teach you like, you know what I'm saying? Like you ain't supposed to, like you might look at something. It's one thing in this book. Let me tell you, it's one thing in this book. It's a, it's a, um, it's a, uh, 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 it's a, it's a, uh, a woman is not supposed to teach or usurp authority over a man. Right now, in my mind, right before look, my mama is the strongest mama I didn't see. So I look and I see my mama usurp. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me tell you something. A man ain't never usurped no authority over my mom. I saw my mom. Listen, any man come around, she got some she usurping her authority, right? So I see it and I respect it. I look at my mom and be like, no, nah, that's strong. You, you're darn right. 
they was about to back up, right? But when you look at it and you look at the book, I, str- I struggle with that. Like, why she can't? My mama know the Bible better than any man I know. I'm trying to figure out why she can't. You know what I'm saying? Why she can't teach the Bible? That don't make no sense, right? But you look at the book and you learn to say, you know what? Maybe I don't make no doubt. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. So despite what I think is right and wrong, let me just go with what the book says, right? It's a lot of people that's going to feel like, I just don't see how if God made me this way, why I can't like the person that I like and love the person I love, right? And they look at, and in their mind, the Bible is wrong for telling them that they can't do what they want to do, right? But at the same time, your question is, do you want to be right or do you want to make it into the kingdom? Sometimes people just want to be right. And that's the choice that you got to make. You got to say, you know what? I don't care. Be honest with yourself, though. I don't care nothing about what this book say. I want to do what I want to do. Right. Then you're going to be all right because you're going to be clear. You don't want to be walking around depressed because when you depress it because you're living in two worlds. Right. It's like you're not accepting what you're doing. I think it's depressing when you sit there. I want to be this, but this is where I am. And your, your life is going to remind you where you are constantly. You know what I'm saying? You're going to try to be, oh, well, I'm a good person. You're going to be seeing them. You're going to be in the, uh, what they call them? What they call them? See, when you in the mirror, what's the thing called? You see here too, though. You know what I'm saying? The affirmation. You know what I'm saying? You in the affirmation. You trying to, you trying to, you trying to tell yourself enough that you believe it. You're a good person. I'm strong. I'm a fighter today. It's going to be a great day. Any adversity I have, I'm going to overcome it. And you say, you repeat that stuff until you believe it. And then guess what? You walk right out that darn door and then you say something foul to somebody because they got on your nerves and they cut you off on the freeway. Right? And then they start raining. You start skidding. You get a flat tire. You know what I'm saying? Then you get there. So after all that, you start doubting. You be like, man, maybe I'm not a good person. Look what I did to this. Look what I said to old, old boy. You know what I'm saying? And maybe this ain't a good day. Look, I just had to change my tire and I ain't even got enough money to replace the tire. Now I'm going to be riding on the darn spare for a darn week. Right. So those things reset you. Now it hurt worse than your morning because you you've convinced yourself it was going to be a good day. And then you have to go back to realizing nah, it ain't. it's a bad day. Right. Because that stuff don't solve problems. Right. You don't solve a problem by repeating something to yourself. You solve a problem by getting to the root of it. And the root of it a lot of times is, are you going to obey y'all or are you not? You might be better off if you're not going to obey them. You better off just saying, I ain't about to obey that mess. I acknowledge it might be right. It might be true, but I ain't about to do it. Right? Or do the opposite and just say, it might be right. It might be true. Let me see what this is about. Let me give them, let me give them all. All right? This is uh, John chapter 10. Give me verse 1. Let's watch what the book say. Is Sister Tia in here? Huh? I don't think so, no. Oh, okay. Because if she is in here, I want her to listen real close. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a and a robber. Right. So he said, anybody who comes to the sheepfold, you know what a sheepfold is? A sheepfold is like think of it like a barn, right? Big old barn. You got a big fence going around, and you got a yard in there, and then you got a bunch of sheep in there. You know what I'm saying? You can hold a bunch of sheep, and it's a door to get to the sheep. So he's saying, look, a person could just climb over the gate. You know what I'm saying? Jump the gate. You know what I'm saying? You could just climb over the gate. But he said, anybody who come in like that is a thief, right? He's about to tell us that, right? He said, you got to come by the door. So he said, you got to come by the door of the sheepfold. So if you got a sheepfold, this is your yard, this is your, and you come by the door, that might be indicative that like, mm, this is my sheepfold, right? But if somebody tried to sneak in through the other side, the back, that might be, indi- if, if y'all saw somebody at this house right over here. Right. And you saw him like looking through the window and then you see him trying to climb through the window. What you going to think? Like, man, that ain't your darn house. You ain't got you don't have a key because any normal person going to walk in right through the door. That don't make sense. You don't have a key. If you don't have a key, of course, you're going to try to slide in through the back. A slide, of course, you're going to try to break through the window. So that's what y'all was saying. He's given a parable. Right. And remember, these parables he takes regular situations that we deal with and he uses that to compare his message of what he's trying to tell us about god right watch this or himself but he that enter in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep to him the porter openeth and the sheep hear his voice and he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth mm-hmm. them out and when he put it 
and he put it forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him. So they know right. So he said, when he put forth the sheep, he go before him. In other words, he go in front of the sheep, and then the sheep are gonna be right behind him. Keep going. Watch this. For they know him, they know his voice, and a stranger mm -hmm. they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Look at it, look at his sheep. His sheep know his voice. When when Yahushua talk, his sheep be like, no, that's Yahushua. Right? They know his voice. And if a stranger talk, if somebody else be like, hey, do this. Stranger talk, they be looking like, no, nah, that ain't Yahushua. Right? It's a message. He's gonna he gonna explain it to us, it, but it's a message in this. Keep going. This parable spake Yahushua unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. They didn't know what he had darn talking about. He could talk about sheep and doors and all that stuff. He's looking like, oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? But watch what happens next. Then Yahushua said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that so now he's explaining the parable. He said, okay, when I was talking about that door of the sheep, I was talking about me. Right? He said, I'm the door of the sheep. What else? I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. He shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and flee. And the wolf right? So he said a good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Who does that remind us of? Yahushua. Yahushua. But he talked, it's Yahushua talking. Who does that remind us of other than Yahushua? Who, who was a good shepherd David. willing to give his life for the sheep? David. David. What David do? What killed a lion. That boy, look. It was a lion that came after the sheep. Right? When David would keep, you remember, David loved them sheep, right? But when David was keeping the sheep, he was like, man, listen, it was a lion that came after him. What did David do to that lion? He killed the lion and saved the sheep. That boy, you know what I'm saying? Open the, he might have opened, didn't he open the, David, uh, open the mouth of the uh, lion on the sheep? He took the you sheep know what I'm saying? The lion's mouth. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That boy killed that lion over his sheep because he's a good shepherd, right? He's a good shepherd. He said, man, I'm not playing with these lions. You can't just have one of my darn sheep. He didn't run off. Y'all sure said, man, a person that ain't a good shepherd, he gonna run off and leave you to it. He is like, nah, he ain't gonna run off. So that's what y'all sure doing. Y'all sure is not gonna run off and leave us to it. Y'all sure said he gonna die for his. And that's what he did. Right? We gonna end up reading about how he died over his sheep. Right? Is everybody a sheep? Ah, only the ones that hear his voice. Right? We gotta hear his voice. So when they talk about hearing his voice, what do you think it's talking about? Talking about the word, right? It's talking about being obedient to the word, right? We got to hear the word and we got to have it in our mind that this is Yah, right? It's a lot of confusion when you knew, when you learn it, when you're trying to figure stuff out, when you haven't turned turned away from sin. It's a lot of confusion, a lot of confusion. You be looking at the word and, and then you go out in your real life. And you have all these inclinations and urges and temptations and all this stuff. And sometimes you don't know what's talking to you. You don't know what's trying to make you go that way or this way. You know what I'm saying? But when you start honing your senses, you know, it'll be like, no, nah, that's a devil. But that, that's consistent with the word. That means that's of God. And then it get easier and easier and easier and easier. And then you're able to tune out the rest of that stuff. Right. All the foolishness, all these voices in your head, all the stuff they're trying to, to get you to do, do what you ain't supposed to be doing. You learn to tune all that stuff out. It don't even affect you no more. You start to hone your senses enough. Right. Keep going. Watch this. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the father knoweth me, even so know I the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. They shall mm -hmm. hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore, he says, so it's going to be other sheep. That's not of what? Of this fold. All right, so he's talking about, look, I got other folds of sheep, though. He's like, this is one fold. I have other folds of sheep. When I'm done with this thing, though, I'm going to bring it over. And we all going to be one fold. What is he talking about? To the Gentiles. Talking to the Gentiles, right? 
Grab uh grab uh first kings. Give me first kings, uh what is it? Twelve I want? Or is it eleven? Give me first kings chapter eleven, maybe verse ten. This is first Kings chapter eleven, verse ten. And after that, I want Hosea. Ooh, that's going to be a tricky one. Give me, what is it? Hosea, we just read it too. Probably Hosea 6, maybe? Uh, I know what you're talking about. I'll be able to find it in a second. All right. Give me 1 Kings, I think 11, 10. If it ain't Solomon. 10. Huh? Talking about Solomon? You want Solomon? I want Solomon. Uh, I want the kingdom ripped away, ripped yeah. away from Solomon. That's 11 or 12? It's 11. All right. What verse? We can start at 10. This, uh, this is uh, 1 Kings chapter 11. Give me verse 10. What does the book say? And he commanded concerning this theme that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which he had commanded. Wherefore, the Lord said unto Solomon, for as much as this is done of thee, thou hast not kept my covenant, and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee and will give it to thy servant. Well, he said, I'm going to take, he telling King Solomon, right? Who, who had all of, all of Israel. He told King Solomon, I'm going to take the kingdom to you and give it to your servant. Watch this. Notwithstanding in thy days, I will not do it for thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of thine hand, of thy, the hand of thy son. Watch this. Albeit I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son for David, my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, sake which I have chosen. Yeah. All right. Move up a little bit and get closer to it. That way she'll walk that way. And the Lord up and the Lord stirred up adversaries unto Solomon, Hadad, the Edomite. He was the king's seed in Edom. For it came uh -huh. when David so, was. Now that's good. So so you can see here. Solomon had the entire kingdom, but the most high God said, I'm going to rip the kingdom from you, but not the whole thing. Now I'm going to split it. That led to having two kingdoms in Israel, right? There was the Northern kingdom. And then there was the Southern kingdom. There was the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah. Right? So when, when, when Yahushua is telling you, I have another fold, he's in Judah and he's talking to the people of Judah, Right? But there are all of our brothers that got scattered by the Assyrians, right? Grab Hosea. You know what I'm looking for? Uh, yeah. Hosea, where it say, you know what I'm saying? He'll be scattered among the Gentiles. Oh, I was going to get the, the one about the door. But... No, no, no. That's, that's nine, but I don't want that one. Give me, no, nah, give me where uh, he say he going to be scattered. Uh, uh, Ephraim going to be scattered amongst the Gentiles. I want to say it's six. I could be wrong, though. I want to say it's Hosea six. Maybe. Maybe I can't remember where it is. It's six. Mm. Let me see. Let me cheat real quick. Right. But our kingdom got split. Our, we had a we had a whole kingdom. And that thing got that thing got. Uh. That thing got split in two. Let me see if I can find this real quick. Let me see. Mm, I don't see it in the six. Try five then. I don't think that's what I want, but I'll take it. This Hosea, go go to Hosea eight. Uh, this ain't what I want, but it'll it'll work for right now. Give me Hosea eight. Start me off at about verse five. It's Hosea chapter eight, verse five. Thy calf of Samaria has cast thee off. My anger is kindled against them. How long will it be ere that they? 
that they attained to innocency. For from Israel was it also the workmen made it. Therefore, it is not God, but the calf of Samaria shall be broken in pieces. They have sown the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. It has no stalk. The bud shall yield no meal. If it be so, it yield. The Pay attention to what he's saying now. He said, they have sown the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. Right? What he's saying is, when you think of wind, it's like nothing. Right? You know what I'm saying? It's empty. You know what I'm saying? It's just nothing. You can't grab it. Can't do nothing with it. Right? So he's saying, what they've done, when they say sown, it's talking about planted. So it's like you planted nothing. You know what I'm saying? But what you about to reap is a whirlwind. So a strong wind that's going to push you around and confuse you and, and tear some stuff up. Right? So he said you, 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 you planted vanity, emptiness. Right? You know what I'm saying? All the stuff you've been doing, all this running around, all this stuff y'all been doing, it's nothing. It don't do nothing for me. I'm not impressed by it. It's empty. But it, as a return, now I'm going to punish you. Right. And that is that's the reality of our all of our lives. Right. We do a whole bunch of stuff. We running around doing a whole bunch of stuff, thinking we doing something, thinking we enjoying our life. But the 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 production, the outcome of it is nothing. You end up with nothing. Listen, I wish I could tell y'all, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like some of my old buddies would be watching. I don't want nobody to get up. You know what I'm saying? But let me tell y'all, listen. I have been around and grown up with some of the coolest people in the world. I'm talking about like in high school. I'm talking about like fly that guy. You know what I'm talking about? Got them all. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't even know what that means when I say got them all. But I just mean got them all. Everybody loves him. The greatest. And guess what? If we look at him now, it's rough out here in these streets. Look, it was one guy. I ain't gonna say no name because I love my mans, right? But listen, it's one guy. You know what I'm saying? He was my man. You know what I'm saying? We get out of high school. I get locked up and I, you know what I'm saying, whatever. And I see him in the position I saw him in on drugs, bugged out, banging on the thing. You know what I'm saying? So y'all don't know when you go to jail, right? They got like different different cells, different little, they call them holding tanks, right? So they got these different holding tanks. So you go into one of the hold, they gonna put you in one of the holding tanks. Usually, if you're a regular person, you know what I'm saying? You're a regular person, you go into the tank with everybody. You know what I'm saying? So you go in there, and you know, it ain't prison, so it ain't like you don't go in there, you just start fighting. That's what happened in prison sometimes, right? But it's jail. Most people in there just looking like, man, I'm drunk, I'm about to sleep it off and go home in the morning. I can't wait to see the judge. I'm out here on traffic tickets. Or, you know what I'm saying? It's just regular people stuff, right? Regular bad people stuff, right? So you go, and you're sitting there, and you're in a regular tank. But then they always got these other tanks. And the other tanks be having, like, one person in them each. You know what I'm saying? And so I see my man in one of the other tanks. You know what I'm saying? And he, he pressing his face up against the glass. Ah, ah, smack. But this, he's my age. We just was in school together a couple years ago, and that got them all. You know what I'm talking about? The most beautiful women, the coolest stuff, just had it all, right? And you see them messed up. And that was only two years after high school. Yeah. And then you got other ones that it take a little longer. They still fly. They still cool. We going to parties. Did that another? Guess what? A couple years later, everybody busted, dusted, and disgusted, right? Because it gets rough in life because... All this stuff that we think we doing in high school, all this stuff we doing right after high school, we think it's everything. Me and your Uncle T, we thought, listen, <laughs> ain't no better than us. You know what I'm talking about? It don't get no better. Thought. And then guess what? Sit down and sitting there about to cry in our beds. Like, <laughs> don't nobody love me? Got a, got a phone full of people. That, I love you. Good morning. I love you. Good morning. But still sitting there rocking. Don't nobody love me. I just want, I just want something real. You know why? Because we were so in wind. We were doing all this stuff of emptiness. It don't mean nothing. It don't return nothing. And the only thing you get back in return is a whirlwind. You know what I'm saying? Your life get darn twisted up. Right? When they say whirlwind, when y'all think whirlwind, y'all thinking like, what do they call the little things outside where you can see it and this yeah, ain't nothing? The dust, what? A dust storm, a little dust bunny, dust storm, right? That's what y'all think. When the book say, whenever you read whirlwind in the book, 
It's talking about who saw the movie Twister. Y'all ain't never seen that. It's probably too old for y'all, huh? You saw the movie Twister? Yo, me and your mama used to like Twister. You know what I'm saying? We used to watch that thing. Scared the mess out of me. I still can't look at a tornado. It's talking about a tornado. When the book say whirlwind, it's talking about a big tornado that tears stuff up. Right? So it's saying you showed emptiness, but what you got back was a big old tornado that tore up your life. And that's what be happening to these people. They life get run through. It's only by the grace of God I'm where I am. My life would have been darn ran through too if I would have stayed on the same path. I've been sitting here looking dusted, busted. Into, sometimes I still look dusted, but disgusted now. You know, don't, don't make no sense. Sometimes I look, sometimes you be seeing me. I'm about, that's a different story now. That's a different story. That's a different story. You know what I'm saying? One time I was in Viet Cong. You know what I'm saying? And shooting them off. Put my hand up like this, trying to save this white guy. They shot my thumb off. Wow. I was like, oh, man, that's a cold game. You know what I'm saying? So I came back. You know what I'm saying? Now I get disability. You know what I mean? That's the only way you get it. My thumb. But you just did. I know, but it's still disabled. Yeah, I'm, just trying, I'm just trying to explain to you. I'm trying to explain to you how it works. So listen. We <laughs> so listen. We got we got we got one chance to get this thing right in our life. Right? One chance, right? We gonna go through all types of stuff in our life. But as long as there's breath in our lungs, then we have a chance to stop sowing wind, to stop planting wind and thinking that something's gonna grow out of it, and actually plant something that matters. That come from this word, that come from good works, that come from our body. Right? Grab uh oh no, keep going, keep going. We ain't get what I want yet. Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel. Wherein is no pleasure. Right? So he said, Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among who? The Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. So this is how our people get spread amongst the Gentiles. That's where we are now. Every time you look around, what you see? Darn Gentile. Right? Oh, cut it out. You look at a darn Gentile, you got a whole bunch of Gentile. You know what I'm saying? Zahar said a little Hebrew girl like him. Tell them about the Hebrew girl they like. Him. You know what I'm saying? A little Hebrew girl. What's her name? Sophia. She might be watching. Who knows? It's something like that. All right, but look, I told him he got a pass. What's her, what's her little brother name? Oh, her little brother name, Yisrael. I said, you know what? It's all right. We'll, we'll think about it. You know what I'm saying? Let me, talk to, let me talk to her parent. We'll think about it. We'll figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Yisrael. You know what I'm saying? We'll figure it out. That's your boy. I know you told me about him last year. He was like, I got one Hebrew in my class. I was like, yeah, for real, what's his name? He said, Yisrael. I'm like, all right, well, might be, might legit. Might legit. That, why you invite him over? Yeah, he won't let me. Oh, Cap. Kids say cap. Cap. Boy say that. Cap. That's cap. Go to um go back to uh this is uh John chapter 10. Give me verse what? 13. It's John chapter 10, verse 13. Watch what the book say. Let's get to it. Y'all sit down, be quiet. Hush. You didn't hear me, boy? Okay. I'm gonna have to knock him out. Matt and Naya. Come over here, sit down. Put that down. Uh, this 10. is John chapter 10. 16. Verse 16. Watch the book say. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring in, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore mm -hmm. doth my father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. Mm -hmm. I may take it from me, but I lay it down myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This Ain't that man? I don't understand them, boy. Y'all don't understand how he talking. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all be reading it, and it's just like, oh, I lay down my life. But you got to, like, you got to picture it. You got to imagine somebody saying that to you in real life, and you never heard nobody talk like this. This man is sitting here like, you know what I'm saying? Don't worry about it. I'm the guy. First of all, I lay down my own life. So if you say that, it'd be like, dang, you giving up? You know what I'm saying? That's how it sounds. And you just give you gonna kill yourself, you're gonna let yourself just die. But then he clarified for you, is like, but can't nobody take my life. You know what I'm saying? Can't nobody do nothing to me now. I'ma lay it down. It's my choice because I got the power to lay it down, but then I also got the power to pick it back up. We've never heard nobody talk like this before. We sitting there listening to this dude, and he just running his mouth, 
But he gets to saying some crazy stuff like that. I lay down my own life. You sound weak. Then he said, but only I could do that because can't nobody take it from me. I'm going to lay it down and I also got the power to pick it back up. What? What are you talking about? Let me see. You know what I'm saying? Let me see what you're talking about. Keep going. Watch this. There was a division, therefore, again, among the Jews for these sayings. Look, after that, there was a division amongst our people, right? Our people was divided, like, what is he talking? What type of what type of slick talk? Slick type of boss talk? I ain't never heard nobody talk like this before. Watch how you talk. Watch this. Many of them said he has a devil and is mad. Why they look like this boy got a demon and he crazy. Then the others were saying, What? Why hear ye him? Others what the others say? These are not the words of him that has a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? Yep. So he said, I ain't never heard no, they look like, I ain't never heard nobody with a demon talk like him. You know what I'm saying? Then they ask the question, have you ever seen a demon heal a blind man? So they arguing back and forth. Like one side, like, man, this dude talking crazy. Talking about laying his life down and picking his life back. I ain't never heard nobody say that. Other ones looking like, no, nah, man, he talking that talk though. Like he the one, like he might be, you know what I mean? Guy, my buddy might be legit. Watch this, keep going. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Yahshua walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us in doubt? If thou be the Messiah, tell us plainly. So you Yahshua see what happened, right? They arguing back and forth amongst themselves. Like, man, that boy got a devil. I don't know what he talking about. Talking about some picking up his back. I ain't never somebody pick up their own life. That's crazy. Right? Then the other one's like, man, I ain't never heard nobody with a demon talk like this. This dude is legit. He the one. He healed the blind man. You ever seen somebody with a demon do some stuff like that? Nah, he the one. Right? So they arguing. They arguing. Then some of them get enough of arguing. They just walk over to him like, all right, listen. Why are you being all cryptic and stuff? Just tell us. Tell us plainly. If you the Messiah, then say you the Messiah. Like, just tell us who you are. Let's do it. Right? Watch what Yahushua say back to him. Yahushua answered them, I told you and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Believe ye, me, believe ye, uh, but ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I uh -huh. give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My father, which have get, gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Mm -hmm. I and my father are one. Then the he said, "What now?" I and my father are one. This is like y'all. I don't y'all don't appreciate like. You've never heard nobody talking like that. He's sitting there. He's looking them in the face. And he's looking like, man, I told y'all who I was, but y'all don't listen. You know what I'm saying? Y'all see all this, this stuff I'm doing. Y'all see I'm healing people, raising people from the dead. Y'all should pay attention to the works. If you don't believe me, just at least believe the works. He's telling him, he's like, even if you look at me and be like, nah, he can't be the one. Shut your darn mouth and look at what I'm doing. You got to You know I'm the one, right? Then after that, he looked at him. He said, you know, I get this from my father. My father is the most high God. Then he ended off by saying, me and my father are one. What? Did you just call yourself God? So you looking at this man, he talking crazy. He doing crazy stuff. Then he look you dead in your face after you challenge and say, just tell us who you are. We thinking that he might say he the Messiah. That's the best we think. When we standing around him, looking at him like, what you think about it? You think he legit? No, I don't think so. No, I think he legit. We arguing back and forth. We think the best case scenario is he going to say, I'm the Messiah. Right? So while we taunt him thinking that we going to get him to say, I'm the Messiah or I'm not the Messiah, he ends up saying, I'm God. Like, you look at that and be like, man, listen. Some of the people that was looking like, no, he might be legit. When they heard that, they look, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not going for that, bro. No, I'm not. Get the stones. Watch what they do. Watch this. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. And y'all shoot get him. Get, give me a stone. Give me a stone. Grab me. Throw that stone to me. I'm about to get him right across the head. Because you can't. Hold you got. Grab, uh, grab uh, Deuteronomy chapter 13. Give me verse 1. It's Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 1 real quick. You can't do that according to our law. According to our law, that gets you killed. What else I want? Uh, 
That's all right. That's all right. Deuteronomy 13 is enough. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 1. This man walking around telling you, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm going to lay down my life. I'm going to go ahead and lay it down. But can't nobody take it from me. You know what I'm saying? Can't nobody take my life. I got the power to lay down my own life. And I also got the power to take my own life back up. They look at him like, what? Then the man come back and he say, I get all this from my father. You know what I'm saying? You don't believe who my father is. You don't know my father. You know what I'm saying? You don't even know him like that. You know what I'm saying? Just last week, he had telling people, you know what I'm saying? A couple of weeks ago, at least, he had telling people, he looking like you are of your father, the devil. Y'all not from Abraham. You don't think these people heard of him saying this? So we listened to him talking about his father, and then he said, me and my father are one. They looking like, man, somebody give me a stone. This look like a good one right here. A nice, good. You know, we didn't have no little rocks. You know, y'all throw rocks. Little kid, y'all throw rocks. We wasn't throwing no little rock. We were throwing them big. That's crazy. You, you get one of them big ones like this. You know what I'm saying? And you toss it right. You try to, you try to get a head shot, though. You know what I'm saying? Because you want to end it. You don't want to see here. You want to end it. I threw a rock one time. Let me tell you. I threw a rock. So I used to get your feet off my court. I used to, uh, I used to uh, play in the street right back in California. And me and my sister was throwing. I think it was my sister. We were throwing rocks. And then it hit this car. And then that car turned around. Stop. Because I guess he saw us. We was throwing him in hiding. I guess he saw us. He stopped. He came back, walked all the way over to me, got in my face. White dude, too. Got white in my face. He said, you, that, that, no. I don't even remember what he said, but he yelled at me. I remember, and my mama told me, don't be disrespectful to adults and stuff. That moment, I just froze. I'm looking like I was probably like four years old, five years old, a bad little, you know what I'm saying? So I'm looking at him like, oh, scared. And then, you know what I'm saying? He drove off after that. And then my mama whooped my darn butt. But then another time I threw a rock, I threw it up high. We was in our apartments. And then my favorite older sister, I threw it, boom, just like that. And that thing landed and it hit her, bow. And she was like, and then, yeah, and it sat down. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I know what it looked like when somebody gets stoned. You know what I'm saying? Because I just threw it up. You know what I'm saying? And that thing hit. And then she, you know what I'm saying? That thing dazed her. So that's what we used to do when somebody when somebody got to talking like y'all. She was talking, talking about, I'm one with the father. Okay, I got something. Pick that thing up. A nice big one. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I got a good grip on the thing. Let me see. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You throw that thing and you try to get you a headshot. Because once you get a headshot, that boy going to be like, be a little dazed. It might not knock him down that first one. That first one might, boom. But you never going to be alone. You just going to be the first one to throw it that everybody else going to start throwing it. So now it's going to be like, boom. And then just because he dazed, a couple of them, he going to slip them on an the accident because he dazed. So he going to, those going to miss. But then it's going to be that one. Bow! Then he going to hit the ground. Once he hit the ground, it's over. Because everybody, yeah, yeah. And they, they hitting them on the ground. And eventually he going to die. That's what they trying to do to Yahushua right now. They trying to offer him because Yahushua is talking crazy to them. Right? This is Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 1. Watch what happens. This is what our law say. It's Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 1. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof... So look, if there arise you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and they give you a sign or a wonder. When they say prophet or a dreamer of dreams, it's something about somebody who has prophecy that can actually tell you the future. That's actually hearing something from somebody to say something. Put that phone away. Right. Hearing something and they and they and they and they talk it. Right. And so he said there be a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and they do signs and they do wonders. And then after that, he say, and those wonders come to pass. So what he's telling you is if it's somebody who sound like they speaking the future and it really is coming true and they doing miracles and the miracles are real what's supposed to happen you supposed to believe what they say and the sign of wonder come to pass whereof he spake unto thee saying let us go after other gods which thou has not known and let us serve them he said if they say let us go after other gods gods that we have not known and let us serve them what you supposed to do you shall not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams for the Yahuwah your God proveth you to know what he said he's testing you. Right. 
If there is somebody who come and let's say they can do miracles, let's say it's legit. Let's tell you they really telling you the future. But they telling you to go after another God, a God that you haven't known. He said, don't you listen to him. What you supposed to do instead? You shall walk after Yahuwah your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And you shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken to turn you away from Yahuwah your God which brought you out of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which Yahuwah thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shall thou put away the evil from the midst of thee. Keep going. If thy brother or thy son or thy mother or thy, if thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which thou hast not known, thou nor your fathers, namely of the gods of the people that are round about you, nigh unto thee, and or are far off from thee, from the end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth, thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shall thine eye pity him, Neither shall you spit, neither shall you conceal him, but you shall surely kill him. Thine you shall surely what? Kill him. Then what happened next? Thy hand shall be first to put him to death, and after who hand what? Thy hand shall be first to put him to death. He said, "You gonna be first. I want you like don't wait." This is what he's telling. He's saying, "Don't wait for somebody else to get to him before you." Right? No, because sometimes that's what happens. You see something happen, and you be looking like, "Man, I don't know if I should say something because." Other people, it's one time like I was I was driving and it was an accident, like right there, boom, accident. And I jumped out of the car. So I'm looking like that's bad. And it was some Hebrews, right? It was some Hebrews and it was some Mexicans on the other side of the accident. So I'm looking like, all right, let me check out, make sure everything all right. So I jump out. I look over, I see a lady with her phone out. So my assumption was she's calling the police. Let me just go figure out what's going on. So then I see another lady jump out for her phone out, but I can see her look right over there where I look and she, she didn't call either. So she put her phone away, started helping out. Then there was this other dude. He said, Somebody, did somebody already call the police? He asked us. We both was like, yeah, I think she called the police over there. Right. He started helping out. This, that, another. Turns out nobody called the darn police. So sometimes you looking and you looking like, man, somebody else will take care of that piece. Y'all is telling us in this situation, don't wait. You know what I'm saying? You be the first one to kill his butt. If you, if somebody telling you to go serve another God, don't wait for somebody else to take care of this for you. You be the first one to get his butt, right? Let your hand be against him first. So I want y'all to understand, because if we just read the gospel, sometimes we get this impression that, oh, these heathen Jews, these Jews are just trying to kill Yahushua. They're jealous of him. No. They think that they're keeping the law. When they see Yahushua and Yahushua say, I and the father are one, they looking like you can't be talking about our God. These miracles cannot be, that confirms it. He just made himself one with God. He definitely has a devil. So in their mind, you are a demon, but you're actually doing miracles and you're deceiving our people. Hmm, I have a law for that. You know what it tells me to do? Stone your butt. And then it tell me to be the first one. So that's why they didn't wait. They didn't go wait for the Pharisees. They didn't go call the judges. They picked the stone up because that's what the books say in this situation. And let my hand be first. Now they rushing. No, I want to be first. The books say I should be first. So they trying to throw, they trying to say, who can get that stone across his darn forehead the fastest? Wow. Nah, I missed. Right? Watch what y'all sure did. Let's jump back. This is uh, John chapter 10. This is John chapter 10. Uh, What verse? 20 what? Uh, 31. Mm, 30. Mm, 31. It's John chapter 10, 31. Then the Jews took up stones to stone him. And y'all sure answered them. Many good works have I shown you from my father. For which of those works do you stone? Yeah, go fast now. Listen. You got it. He had to talk fast. They picked up the stones to get him. Y'all sure. In my mind, y'all sure start talking real fast. Oh, hey, hey, hold on. So which, hold on. Which of these good works now? Which one of these, which one of these good works y'all about to stone me for? 
Just tell me. I did a bunch of good stuff. I healed a blind man. Did that nothing. So tell me, which one are y'all about to kill me over? Right? And then watch what they say. And the Jews answered them saying, for a good work, we stoned thee not. Hey, that little bit. Uh, look, boy, we ain't about to kill you over no good work. Right? Why are we about to kill you? But for blasphemy, and because thou had being a man, makest thyself God. You being a man, you made yourself God. That's blasphemy. I don't care that you're doing miracles. I don't care that you might actually be a prophet. My book tell me, if you do that, even if you're a dreamer, a dream, and a prophet, and what you say come to pass, and you're doing miracles, guess what? My hand's supposed to be the first one at your butt. So they they trying to explain he they getting the rocks together. They like, oh no, this ain't about to be for a good work. <laughs> Let me tell you something, boy. No, this is because you made yourself God, you being a man. You know what I'm saying? So watch what y'all would say. Y'all say Yahushua answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said ye are gods. If he said, Is God, it not written? He said written in your law. He's talking about the psalm. Right? He said, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. Watch this. Grab uh, Psalm 82. Let's read it for ourselves. So the people who know the scriptures would know what he's referencing. He's asking me, it's like, don't it say somewhere in the Psalms? Ye are gods. Right? Didn't. But in other words, what he's saying is, didn't God call us all gods? Right? Didn't he call his children gods? Watch this. This is a uh, this is a uh, Psalm chapter eighty two verse one. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty, judges among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? So them. now he said, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty, and he judges in what? And he judges among the gods. He judges among the gods. That gives us the impression that there's multiple gods, right? Let's keep going. Watch this. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and the needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, ye are gods. And all I have said, what? Ye are gods. He said, I have said, ye are gods. In other words, y'all are gods. Now, this is in our book. This is God talking to people. He said, I have said, y'all are gods. But watch what he say next. And all of you are children of the Most High. Right? So the children of the Most High are gods. But watch this. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. But you have to die. Right? You have to die. What is he talking about? Resurrection. He's talking about the resurrection. Right? We talked a little bit about it uh, during our day of atone, our, our uh, day of trumpets uh, study. Right? He's talking about the resurrection. Right? When we die, we're resurrected. And when we're resurrected, we resurrected with new bodies because we heard that flesh cannot enter into the kingdom. So the bodies that we get makes us like God, which makes us gods amongst the rest of the people. Right. You have to understand, you got to go watch the Revelations uh, series. But we talk about it in Revelations. It describes to well, not necessarily in Revelations, but uh, in Revelations and a little bit in Isaiah, it describes to us that we will be there with new bodies. And it's other people that got regular bodies that survive through all the events of revelations and they gonna have to come up every year and see Yahushua and that's who they gonna learn from Yahushua gonna be teaching from this big mountain anybody anybody who reading what is in the Bible of the year I think what was it, Isaiah 4 Isaiah 4 might have talked about it right where he was where he Isaiah 4 was talking about man look the mountain maybe wasn't Isaiah 4 maybe it was Hosea wow. but uh you know what I'm saying all the mountains get low the land get flat and there's one big mountain and Yahushua standing at the top of that thing it's a Yah, but Yah standing at the top of that thing and giving out the teaching of the word, right? The law. So all the people going to have to come to him. When that happens, we will be like gods. We will have these, these new bodies, you know what I'm saying, that do different stuff, you know what I'm saying, move different. We don't look the same, you know what I'm saying? 
And these other people are just going to be regular human, human beings. So when they see us, they're going to be like, that's the gods over there. Right? And God, the most high, will be amongst us. That's why I say, I am amongst the gods. I rule with the mighty and I, am, uh, I rule amongst the gods. You know what I'm saying? So Yahushua is using this. He's saying, why is it so offensive for you to hear me say, I am one with the father? When the book itself say my children are gods, right? Keep going. This is a uh, go back to uh, Psalm 10. What verse? Uh, verse 34. This Psalm 10, chapter 34. Watch, I mean, verse 34. Watch this. Yahshua answered, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. If he called them gods unto whom the world of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Say ye of he him called him them gods to who? If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came. In so notice that he's not saying he called everybody gods. Right? He's not saying that everybody, everybody gods. He didn't say unto the Christians they are gods. He didn't say unto the Muslims they gods. He didn't say unto the black people they gods. He said unto whom the word of God came. A lot of a lot of us think the word of God came on us and it happened. Right? We know the word of God came when we produce good good works. Otherwise, the word of God ain't touched us yet. We ain't even heard the word of God yet. We just run in our darn mouth. You know what I'm saying? Our 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 mouths and our lips, you know what I'm saying? It's close to God, but our hearts very far from him. All right, keep going. Watch this. The scripture cannot be broken. Say, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said I am the Son of God. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand. He went away again beyond Jordan in the place where John had first baptized, and there he abode. Many right, so after that, he, he escaped. He got he got loose, and them boys were still trying to kill him. So he got loose, and he ended up going to where John bat first baptized. Right? So it's people over there that still follow John. Watch what they say when they saw Yahweh Shua. restored unto him and said, John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true. And all right, so some of the people, they looking like, I didn't do no miracles like this dude. It tell us that this guy was going to be special. Everything that John told us about Yahweh Shua is true. They looking at him and now they start messing with Yahushua because they probably ain't never met him before. All right, keep going. Uh, chapter 11. Uh, uh, before chapter 11, give me, uh, give me Luke. Give me Luke, uh, give me Luke 13. Uh, give me Luke 10. We can go to Luke 10. Give me Luke 10. Don't, don't start me off at one though. Uh, in the interest of time, jump down to about, start me at about seven. Give me 17. This is uh this is Luke chapter ten verse seventeen. Watch what the book say. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, "Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name." Right. So this is he he just got done talking to seventy of his disciples, seventy of them, right? And he said, "This this particular group of seventy disciples, I want y'all to go out, and I want y'all to go into all the cities." And I want y'all to tell everybody about what I'm teaching y'all, right? And then he gave them powers to cast out demons and, and the demons obeyed him. So now after that happened, the 70 is coming back to him, celebrating. They happy. They looking like it really worked. Like I'm really telling demons to get out of people and they listening. So this is where Christians get it from. Christians looking like, see, the 70 did it so we could do it too. How many people did that though? 70. 70 people. That's what he told you exactly how many people did it. 70. Your Christian butt ain't about to wake up in 2024 and start casting out darn demons. You ain't even met the darn man. Don't even obey him. Don't even listen to nothing. You don't even know a darn book. Don't even try to obey him. Don't even try to act like you know what you're talking about. You think you're going to wake up and cast out demons. Why? Because you got a little tingle in your spine. One of them songs came on. That's crazy. Right? You got you to gotta actually pay attention to what the book is saying and then let the Most High God tell you when to step up. You ain't got to exalt yourself. You exalt yourself, what's going to happen? You're going to chop your butt darn down. What's the point of doing that? 
Y'all, she would tell us, watch this. Keep going. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold. What is he talking about? That's after he goes up. Right. He said, I beheld said Satan as lightning fall from heaven. He's talking about when he goes up, when he he's 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 describing to him a vision. Right. So he's telling him, I have a vision that Satan is going to fall from heaven. If Satan falls from heaven, that means where he where was he before he fell? He was up there. He is in heaven. Right. That's where the Christian get the idea from. Well, Satan, well, he used to be one of God's mightiest angels. Right. That's where they be getting that lie from. Because they can't, comp the only way that they can comprehend this thing is they got to think about it. Well, God would never let anything. Everything that bad happened to me is Satan's fault. And there's no way that Satan can be on God's same team unless Satan tricked him. So he's only in heaven because Satan tricked God. And then when God figured him out, he cast him out of heaven because Satan disobeyed him. That's the only way things make sense to them. So they got to come up with that myth. But in reality, no, 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 no. Satan is not solely responsible for everything bad to happen to you. The Most High God is. Most High God sent Satan to go attack your butt. Most High God sent Satan to tempt you, right? And then your butt disobeyed and you fell to temptation, right? But that's what happened. So Satan, when Yahushua goes up, Satan no longer has a place in heaven. We'll, we'll talk about that when we get to Revelations. And we'll go through all the details of it. But that's the vision that he saw. He said, he said, man, I saw him fall like lightning from the sky. So he's saying that to him, letting them know that, oh, it's coming, y'all. Y'all casting out demons? Woo, we getting close. We getting, getting close to the point where he's about to fall from the sky. I'm about to go on up. Watch this. Keep going. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather he said, in this what? Rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. He said, it, listen, I understand y'all excited. Don't celebrate that just because y'all can command the spirits to come out of people. He said, that's not the important piece. Be celebrating that your names are written in the kingdom, right? Your names are written in heaven. You are going to enter the kingdom. That's the part that you should be celebrating. It's important to call that out because that's the focus that he has, right? Somebody casting out demons can be duplicated. Satan can cast out Satan if he wants, right? Just to trick our butts. Here, 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 here. Raise somebody out. It'll really be somebody with a demon. Here, raise somebody up and be like, I command you to come out. And the demons talking to each other at that point. Like y'all, look here, we about to trick these Christians, right? And then they come out, and guess what? All the Christians be like, "Oh, it's a man of God, it's a prophet of God," right? That part can be duplicated. You speaking in tongues, that can be duplicated. You speaking a prophecy and telling the future, that can be duplicated. Satan can tell some future. He been around a long time. You don't think he can predict? It's people that been around just in a lifetime, and they can predict things happening. It's people on the stock market right now, and they looking at, "Hey, listen." We know that every time the Fed cuts 50%, because the Fed, you know what I'm saying? The Fed, the, uh, when they say the Fed, they're talking about the, uh, the Federal Reserve, right? Which is the bank that, that funds America, right? They just cut interest rates by a half a percentage point, right? They call that, they call that 50 basis point, right? So they just, they just cut the, the interest rate. Now, what that's supposed to do is, that's supposed to make it easier for everybody to get loans, right? Loans are supposed to be cheaper because now all the banks can borrow money from this, this, this big bank. They can borrow money at a lower rate, which means in theory, they can give it to us at a lower rate. But in reality, what that also means is when the banks hold our money in the savings accounts, right? That means that they're going to give us less interest on that because the bank always got to make money. So if they are charging less interest to loan money, and they're paying less interest when they when you loaning them money, right? When they holding your money, all right? So that's what happens. Now, what also happens is some banks is gonna say, "That's great that I'm getting money at a lower rate, but your credit card rate ain't coming down, and 
your home rate ain't coming down. Because guess what? Y'all remember earlier in the year, them banks were shutting down. You know what I'm saying? You saw the bank in California shut down. I think it was a bank in Illinois that shut down. A couple of banks all over the globe starting to shut down. The banks is losing money. You got banks buying other banks. Y'all see in the news that Capital One bought Discover, right? So these banks is coming together, trying to team together because it's, it's getting rough out here in these streets. So when that happens, when the banks feel like they losing money, guess what they ain't about to do? They ain't about to get your butter cut, right? So first, what they're going to do is they're going to try to recoup. So they're going to keep interest rates where they at, right? Then they're going to recoup as much money as they can from that. They're going to say, okay, now we can ease a little bit, right? So that's how this stuff works. If these people can predict that, if they can see that and be like, I was around in 2008 before Obama took office and Bush was in office and we had the financial meltdown. And another one might say, I was around in 2000 when there was the dot-com bubble, right? Where everybody thought it was Y2K and the world was going to end and there was a financial crisis. And I was around in the 70s and I was around it. So all these people was around and they see it and they see the pattern. And guess what? They can predict it. They can say, nah, by the end of 2024, X, Y, I'm reading them. They telling me. By the end of 2004, X, Y, and Z is going to happen. And guess what? That thing happened. So you mean to tell me if we in one lifetime can look at information and do that, you mean to tell me the devil can't predict what's about to happen? Yes, he can. And he going to whisper it to somebody. They going to think they hearing from God and they going to say, thus says God, you must go get this mark of the beast. You know what I'm saying? And we going to believe they, but we going to be looking at them like, sound about right to me. What he said came true. Sound about right to me. Get the mark. And we're going to think we could, we serving God when we do this stuff. Right? Everything can be duplicated except one thing. What's that one thing? Obedience to the most high God. That is the only thing that a devil is never going to duplicate. Never. You will get demons that will give praise to God. We reading about it right here. When y'all sure were casting them demons out, what was they saying before he cast them out? They are saying, oh, son of man, have you come before the time has come? That's praising him. They, they acknowledging you the one. They beg, they like, just, I mean, don't, don't send me, just send me over into those pigs, please. They acknowledging you the king. That's praising him. Right? You don't think these... These demons will praise God. They'll do all that. tell people, and you wouldn't know the difference. The only thing that they're not going to do is make somebody obey. they never going to try to send somebody to the kingdom. they let your mouth talk. People will talk like they're going to the kingdom. they act like it too, but they ain't going to actually obey. That's what you got to walk. Where's the sin? Once you see that sin, be like, nah, that's, that's all I need to see. Because the Most High God is going to show it to you. If somebody is somebody going to lead you to hell, the Most High God is going to show you that they going to sin. That's his grace to you. Then it's up to you to look at it and be like, mm, I don't know. Brother, let me tell you, this is what you did. You know you wasn't supposed to do that. As soon as that brother gets to trying to defend himself, no, nah, I don't think that. I don't think that's right. Well, just sit down and listen to my teaching because I'm right and you wrong. As soon as you get to hearing all that stuff, you know, all right, well, I'll catch you later. You know what I'm, saying? I'm, I'm just going to read the book on my own for a little while. I'm just going to figure it out. I'll let you figure it out on your own. You don't want to be sitting under nobody that's going to sit here and lie and and, and, and try to, you, you correct them and they try to fight against it. What you fighting against right for? That's crazy. What side you, if you fight against right, what side you put yourself on? Wrong. I'm going to sit here in a good conscience and learn from you. you. You put yourself on the side of wrong. Knowing what you're hearing is right. That's crazy to me. Keep going. Watch this. In that hour, Yahushua rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto the babies. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, who the Father is but the Son, and he whom the Son will reveal him. And he turned unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that you see. He said, blessed are your eyes and the eyes that see the things that you see. Why? I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see. Go open the door downstairs for me. He said, many prophets and kings desired. Right? What else? And have not seen them. And to hear those mm -hmm. things that you hear and have not heard them. 
And behold, he, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall he I said, do? He said, Master. What should I do to inherit eternal life? He said, if I want to get to, if I, this eternal life you talk, because ain't nobody talked like this before. So this eternal life you're talking about, right? I hear what you're saying, but how do I get to it? What should I do to inherit that eternal life that you're promising right now, right? They testing him. He's a lawyer. That's what they say. Yeah. So that means he knows our scripture so much so that he's above a scribe. Right. Think of a lawyer as like the next step. He's above a scribe. He's a lawyer. He knows the law. Right. So he's looking at you like master. I hear you. I hear you talking about this. This eternal life. You know what I'm saying? But tell me. How do I inherit that eternal life? Right. Watch what he say. Watch what y'all should say. And he said unto him, what is written in the law? How readest thou? Right? So he asked him, well, you tell me. What you, when you read the law, what do you understand from it regarding eternal life? Right? Watch this. The answer is said, thou shalt love thy Lord, thy God, with all thy heart, and all thy soul, and all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. Right? So he told him, listen, you got it right. You love Yahuwah with everything you got and love your neighbor as yourself. You're right. That'll get you in there. Right. So the lawyer thought he was testing him. Y'all sure put it back on him. Well, what do you read from the law? What you think it is? He's like, well, you know what I'm saying? Love God and love your neighbor. It's like, right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? You do that. You'll get into the kingdom. Watch what he say next. Well, he willing to justify himself said unto y'all sure. And who is my neighbor? Ain't that the question that we asked? Right. We talked about that one on the on the fellowship call. Right. It's a natural question. You say, OK, 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 I get it. Love your neighbor as yourself. But. Who exactly is my neighbor now? Person that live right next door to me. Is it the people that live in my neighborhood? Is it the people in my city? People in my state? People in my nation? Like who exactly makes up my late neighbor? So watch what the book say. Yahshua answering said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stopped, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance, there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed on on the riverside, passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And went to him Samaritan. What's a Samaritan? And he went to him and bound up his wounds. What's a Samaritan? Oh, um, the Gentiles that live in the northern Israel. That's right. So you remember the king of Assyria came and he took all our people out of out of the northern uh, tribes, right? He took all our people out. He moved us over into all the other territories of Assyria. So then they ended up replacing our people with Gentiles. They put a bunch of, you know what I'm saying, a bunch of people like Indians and a whole bunch of other people from different parts of the world, and they stuck them down in Israel and then told them to live there instead of us. So then they started to call themselves Samaritans because they live in Samaria, right? Our king, um, Amri, we had a king named Amri. He built up a place called Samaria when he became king, and he's like, you know what? This is where I'm going to put my palace. Then after that, King Ahab took that same place and he built it up. Then after King Ahab, uh, King Ahab signed what? Jehoahaz? Jehoahaz or Joash? Yeah, jo jo Jehoahaz, Joash, Joram. Um, but all his sons ended up living in that same place too. So Samaria became known as like the capital of the northern tribes. You know what I'm saying? So that was the most popular place. It was the most populated place. It was the most uh, most built out place. So it had all the attractions. So when all of our people got taken out, of course, that's where all the Gentiles went to. So they understood themselves to be Samaritans or Samarians, right? In the New Testament, they call them Samaritans. So the Samaritans, so when the people say, oh, be a good Samaritan, they're talking about this parable, right? That's where that phrase comes from, right? It's, talking, it's basically saying, be a good outsider, be a good person that's imposter into your people, right? But be a good person or a good, uh, a good version of that. Our people would have saw a Samaritan, right? As like a, like, it's like disgusting. Like you a fake. So the same way, 
those of us who know we Israelites and we come from, we the true descendants of Israel. When we look at the, the Jews, the Jewish people that's in Israel right now, when we look at them, a lot of us kind of feel disgusted. Like, man, you still in our identity. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you getting all the benefits of the same stuff that we getting punished for. You know what I'm saying? So we kind of look at that with a disdain, right? In the same way, that's how we would look at the Samaritans. We would look at them like, man, y'all not really Israelites. Y'all sitting here, they, they, it's the same thing. They try to, they try to pretend like they keep in our religion. They try to, they try to, you know, act like they keep in our laws. They try to act like they us, but they're really not us. You know what I'm saying? So when we look at it, we looking like, man, we don't like that. So that's why this parable means so much because y'all, y'all sure is saying, listen, to answer the question of who is a neighbor to you, let me tell you a story. There was a man, he got beat up, robbed, left on the street for nothing. Then you got one of his own people, a priest, come by, look at him, pass him by. You got another person of his own now nation. Pass him by. That boy crossed the street and passed him by. Crossed the street. Didn't want to do no one. Don't even come near me. You look dirty. Because the priest, what, what is the priest thinking about? Why, why might a priest do that? I got to go make the sacrifices. If I get down and help you, what'll happen to me? I'm unclean. I, now my hands is unclean. Now I got to go through all these rituals again. And I'm already late for my shift at the temple. Right? So he's looking like, let me stay far away from that. Because his priority is, I got to serve God. So this man is sitting in the street. He don't see that as serving God. He prioritized serving God at the temple. Okay. He crossed the street. What the next man do? Same thing, Levi across the street. Levi, he ain't a priest, but he a Levi. He probably got to stay clean too. Cross the street. What else? The Samaritan came and he picked my man up, gave him some money, got him cleaned up, bound up his wounds. Go ahead and walk, read it. And when he went to him, he bound up his wounds, pouring oil and wine, and set him on his own bed on his, on his own beast, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow, and then watch what he did next. Not only did he bring him to a hotel. He booked him a room in the hotel. He took care of him while he was in the hotel. And then watch what he did next. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Then he paid the hostess at the hotel. He said, listen, take care of my man. Here go a little bit of money. If you end up spending more than that taking care of him, when I get back, I'll pay you back for everything you spent. So he hooked her up. And told her, take care of him. This is somebody who's supposedly an imposter of his people. This is a Gentile. And y'all know how we saw Gentiles. Watch this. Keep going. Which now of these three thinkest thou was the neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? So now Yahushua turns the question back on the lawyer. He said, the lawyer, remember the lawyer asked him, how do I get into the, or he said, how do I uh, inherit eternal life? He said, I don't know. You read the scriptures, you tell me. And the lawyer came back to him and said, I get it. You have to serve God with all your heart and you got to love your neighbor as yourself. Now she was like, yeah, you're right. Then the lawyer came back to him and said, okay, how do I know exactly who my neighbor is? Y'all, she was like, let me tell you a story. And got gaffled up, bow, 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 beat up, left on the street. You know what I'm saying? Priest came by across the street trying to stay away from him. Levite didn't mess with my man. But then, this Gentile came by, saw him, picked him up, took care of him, took, booked him a room, paid this lady to take care of him, told her, if you spend any more than what I paid you, I'll come back and pay you more. And y'all sure went back to him and said, now you tell me, which one of these do you think was a neighbor to the man that got beat up? Watch what he said. And he said, he that showed mercy on him. Then y'all sure said unto him, go and do likewise. All right, he said, go out there and do likewise. Right? Show mercy onto my people. Notice the order in which this was set forth. Hebrew was shown mercy by Gentile. Right? It's important that he framed it that way. Right? It is very important that he framed it that way because this whole thing is centered around our people. Right? But at the end of the day, if we show mercy on to the Gentile or to the Hebrew and they end up serving the most high God, that is a blessing for us in the same way. That makes us a neighbor, 
right? There's power to being a neighbor. The, the idea of neighbor is very important. What Yahushua is telling him is this Gentile is just like you by serving you in my name. Right? This Gentile, by coming to take care of you, has saved his soul. So now that becomes your neighbor or your brother. So that's why he asked him, you tell me which one was a neighbor to that man. If he's a neighbor, that is the same one that gets into the kingdom the same way you do. Right. And that's what we have to think about. Right. Sometimes these people that we see that are random people, we don't know they like. But it just might be that some of these people will end up serving the most high God. And if that happens to be the case, then whoever we receive in his name, then we get the reward as if we received him. Right. Keep going. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Yahshua's feet and heard his word. Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And right, so Martha, she looked like, Yahshua, you came to town. I heard a lot about you. Come stay at my place. And Martha wiping down tables. She getting everything ready. She cooking the food. Uh, take that out the oven for me. Okay. Oh, she grabbed that. Then bringing stuff out. She getting the plate. You want something to drink? She getting everybody. So Martha busy moving, serving everybody. Guess what Mary sitting here doing her lazy butt. Mary sitting there just listening to y'all. Sure. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And so she get mad. Martha get mad. You don't see me doing all this work trying to serve all the kids. You know, y'all, she will bring a, he brought a crowd. You don't see me trying to serve all these people, trying to take care of everybody. So she yelled at Yahushua, like, can you tell her to help me? Watch this. Yahushua answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But when they say one, careful, it's saying, it's saying that you worried, right? When they say, like, think of careful. When we say careful right now, we, we think of like, you're very precise about what you're doing. Like, you're careful about what you're doing. So it's like, I don't want to make a mistake, right? That's how we think of careful. But that's not how this is using the word careful. When it's saying careful, it's like you care about everything. Caring a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like you're worrying about everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, oh my goodness gracious, that might mess up or that might go wrong or this, that, and the other. That might go wrong. So it's like, it's the same concept as careful, but it's the way that we would usually describe somebody that's just worrisome. They have a lot of anxiety, right? Somebody who's very anxious. So that's how she is. Like, but look, you anxious about all this stuff, right? But watch this. And troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Right? So Yahushua told her, like, I know you think you're doing the right thing by serving and getting and making sure everybody's comfortable. I know that feel right to you. That feel like that's what's supposed to happen right now. But little do you know, your sister, she chose the right thing. She chose to listen to my word. And what she chose will not be taken away from her. That is important for us because this is the very problem. A lot of times we need to feel like we're doing something, right? And that's where Satan get to work. Feeling like, okay, if I can make them feel like they're doing something, give them a false sense of confidence. Because what do Christians generally do? They get in there, they be on fire for Jesus Christ, right? And after that, well, I just want to hand out pamphlets. You know what I'm saying? So they go, and they go hand out pamphlets to random people. They feel like they're doing something. They go, they go, they go pick up and go volunteer feeding uh, hungry people and all the. Hey, brother, have you ever heard of the Lord? All right, well here, here's a, here's a hot dog, all right? Brother, here's a bowl of chili. Yeah, you know, here, brother. You know what I'm saying? So they feel like they serve and they feel like they're doing something. It gives them a false sense of con confidence in the word, but they never actually got the word. So what happens is they just burn out, right? They on fire, but eventually that fire burns out because it's not fueled by the word. If you fuel it by something, that you ever like try to light a fire so you can get them, uh, them, uh, them, uh, them, them, them uh, logs that you get from Walmart. Them things burn forever. You know what I'm saying? You put them things in there, light that thing up, it'll burn forever. It's easy money. But then it's like certain wood that you get. I think you throw that thing in there and just eat the wood up real quick. You know what I'm saying? Like we used to live, it'd get cold. We had a chimney. We put it in there. 
And my mom will always tell them, no, not that wood. I don't know nothing about the wood, but it's like, not that wood, because we had put that wood in there, and that thing just burned up, and the whole fire just gone in, in, in 10 minutes. You know what I'm saying? But you get the right wood, that thing can sit there for a minute, and you'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what happened. We're not, we don't fuel ourselves with the right stuff a lot of times. You know what I'm saying? We get to fueling ourselves with, with stuff that, that's vain. You know what I'm saying? Oh, look at every, look at all the great that I'm doing. We got it on camera. Oh, look, I'm feeding it in the name of the Lord. I'm feeding, what's your name? Betty? I'm feeding Betty right now in the name of the Lord. God bless you, Betty. Right? And in our mind, we're looking like, oh, man, we're doing a lot of good work out here. Look at how many likes I got on Facebook. Look, they love me on Instagram. They think I'm a great person. And so, yeah, that does fuel you. Right? Your fire burning. You look like Jesus Christ. You start making videos. Jesus Christ told me today. But guess what happened in a couple months? Burnt out. Burnt out. Because you're not fueling it with the right stuff. Now, if you get the word, take longer. Don't take longer. And you're going to have the same fire in you. And you're going to be wanting to do stuff. But if you sit your butt down and get the word, and the word feeds you, your fuel never burns out. It always burns at the appropriate level. Right? Got it. You get it in there. And you got what's needful. Now you have the information, the knowledge, and the understanding so when you serve, you can do it right. You don't get to doing all this wild stuff, doing stuff you're going to regret later, getting stuff, getting tricked, giving your money to things that you think is right. You find out it ain't right. You know what I'm saying? You give stuff to you. You give out of your heart only because you want payment from the most high God, not because you want likes on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? Not because you want you want hearts on darn. Uh, what they got on TikTok? Is it hearts? You know what I'm saying? Whatever they got on TikToks, not because you want that on TikToks. Right? You know what I'm saying? You do it because you really want it. You really want to serve the most high God. That's what he's that's what he's explaining to Martha right now. Keep going, watch this. That's the end of the chapter. That's him. Okay, we can uh we can end right there then. Um so next week we are probably gonna skip to about maybe Luke 13 or 14. We might skip to 14. Um, and, uh, we getting close, we getting close, we getting, once we get to Luke 13, 14, you know what I'm saying? We'll have, uh, we'll have a few things we'll have to go or he's going to teach us about, you know what I'm saying? He's going to teach us about our faith, what, who we got to turn from. Uh, he's going to teach us again about how we got to keep our family, you know what I'm saying? In perspective, you know what I'm saying? We got to put the most high God before our family. He's going to keep saying that to us. Um, and then a lot of other things. And that's, that's important because a lot of times you, 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 the stuff that we think are important is really dependent on us. Right. So it's like, it's like, everything is like, everything is manipulating us, everything, not people, right. Things, right. Spirits is manipulating. So it's like all this stuff we find important is not really important. It's all dependent on us. So if we focus on the most high God, everything starts to fall in place. Like we sitting here putting all this energy, trying to hold things in place. Like, oh, don't leave me. You stay here. This, 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 uh, this, that, another. My kid, no, you don't be this and this too. Okay, this, that, another. Keep my job right there. Keep this over here. So every, we trying to use all this energy to keep everything in place. Most High God is saying, no, let it all fall, right? Let everything drop and then focus on me and just watch how everything reattach. And now it's going to be their energy to reattach because they see you attached to God. And that's the stuff that's going to last forever. Right? When you attach to the most high God and people attach to you because you attach to the most high God, because they want to get close to the most high God, those attachments last forever. You know what I mean? So that's what, that's what we have to refocus ourselves. So he's going to try to teach us some of that stuff. And after that, I got to look what coming out. I can't really think of it. But any questions? Any question? Any questions in the chat? Yeah, hot dogs for Christ. What you talking about? You ain't never had no hot dogs for Christ? Wrong y'all. Oh, I thought I know y'all ain't no Christians. Y'all ain't never had the chili for Christ? <laughs> Did the chili bowls? You know what I'm saying? You hand out a little chili because you know the Christians, they try, they economic. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to. They ain't about to make you. What do you think? You about to get steak for Christ? You ain't never heard of no steak for Christ. Who heard of steak from Christ? If I heard no darn steak for Christ, I'll show up. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you some steak for Christ, I'll show up. No, they give you the chili. They give you the beans or they give you the big chili. You know what I'm saying? When it's cold outside, 
They try to give you something that the poor people will feel cold. You know what I'm saying? Be like, here you go, brother. You know what I'm saying? Give you a big bowl of chili, a little cracker in it. Hungry man go over there. He sit down. They usually sit down the things. Yeah, I used to be out there with him. And now stuff. Looking like, man, all right. I thought I was doing something too. We didn't did it. We did hot dogs, didn't we? Uh, hot dogs and burgers or something like that. Yeah, we did hot dogs and burgers. We did that when we first was out there. We was looking like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Let's go feed these people. But we wasn't afraid. We, we didn't put it on camera or nothing, did we? No, we didn't do nothing. Like that. We ain't never do no crazy stuff. Uh, I think uh, I think we did take a picture. That's though. right. We did. That long. Oh, you was around, huh? A, uh, That's right, Dan. Yeah, we've been here since, since almost the beginning. We took a picture. That's right. We took a picture. We did what? Like in your house, in the house, we took a picture of like us like putting the food together. Oh, yeah, we did. But but I think we was trying to solicit people to help us. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we was trying. I think we was asking people to. Uh, donate because I think uh, I think I got some donations from a lot of people. They're trying to show them, like, yeah, we really doing. We ain't stealing y'all stuff. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. See, Sister so Sharon mistaken. We, if we, even if we did do hot dogs, some things was all beef. Don't get it twisted. Oh, she thought we had pork hot dogs? Yeah, that's just disrespectful. I ain't yeah, you disrespectful. Pork hot dogs I was like a kid. <laughs> you disrespectful. Sister Sharon, you know what? You missed too many, uh, you missed too many, uh, yeah, fellowship so, hours. You know what I'm saying? You done lost. You didn't hey, lost who we hey, is. You know what I'm saying? disrespecting you our name. You better go get you a, a Nathan's or a Hebrew National. You know, so that's a real hot dog. She said, so y'all was handing out swine. That's cold blooded. Yeah, that's hey, cold blooded that you would even think of such a thing. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. Bro, I ain't had a pork hot dog since I was probably a kid. This was even before I, like, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> came into the world. Like, I wouldn't eat that crap. I wouldn't even know what a pork hot dog felt like. Bro, I, I can't remember. I don't even know what some things taste like no more. That's man. crazy. A pork hot dog, that thing, you feel right. That's wild. Yeah, Hebrew National. Some good hot dogs. Some <laughs> she said y'all was serving Hebrew Franks. Yeah, All right. Let's pray out. <laughs>